In one of the articles you wrote, you mentioned plant training changes gene expression. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think I think some context and and and, and a little bit of background on how, how genes are expressed is is relevant without getting too technical about it. Um, people forget that, and plant has DNA, of course, right? Um, but the, the, the they have an entire genome in every single cell of their their their, their, their ent- entire existence, right? So every cell, every cell that makes up the roots, every cell that makes up you know the stem, the leaf, the thing, each one of them has its own genome. So and each one of those cell types have a different way of expression expressing the genome, right? So they have different genes that are active versus ones that are inactive in other tissue types, and that's true in cell types as well. It's why. A flower's a flower and a root's a root, right? They start from the same, essentially the same precursor, but they deviate down the line, cell division and, 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 and differentiation. So so when you um when you have when you say oh there's a gene expression change, it doesn't always mean throughout the entire plant. Sometimes it can be lo- locally to the area that you're talking about. So that, that's just a little bit of preamble that I wanted to give and, and qualification of that. If you if you cut a plant, for example, doesn't mean necessarily mean that Every every cell expresses its genes now differently, you know. But there can be big changes at the site where you made that where, where you made that cut. But there is also signaling mechanisms that do go throughout the plant, and it can prime the plant for, like I say, stress resistance and stuff like that. So your your specific example, if you are, you know, if you're taking if you're taking a clone, um, you injure the plant. Okay, you you cut through the plant um, branch. And then you take the clone away. Now forget about the clone. What happened? What happened at that site that you cut? So the plant has a wound response mechanism that's evolved for millions of years. This has got to do. This is this is a, a, a kind of an advanced an advancement on the trait of um, herbivorism. So they, you know whether it be a small animal or insect that chews on the plant that eats the plant for for its dietary needs. Um, the plants have got a response to that. Whether it be producing certain compounds that will repel them, you know, different tastes, whether it be some plants have developed like spikes and needles, like stinging nettles, for example, to try and, you know, repel that. So so they have like a whole, you know, tens of tens of millions of years of evolution and hundreds of millions of years of evolution behind those mechanisms, right? So so that's the other thing to bear in mind. It's like when we take in a cut and it's nothing new to the plant, you know, the plants, they, you know, as well, as well, ready for 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 an injury like that but what we can do there is we we can we can make the injury um in a specific way at a specific time that we can try and direct some of that expression and and, uh, changes in gene expression so like this say like the wound response mechanism itself right like that's that's a good one to pre-activate so the earlier that you can pinch out or top a plant Generally, the more hardy and resilient the plant becomes to that specific thing. Again, back to your crop steering, right? If you want, it's not necessarily that you need to do it now, but you want it to be able to do it later. So, injuring the plant early on in that respect can change the gene expression so that we get a better response the next time. You see, it's this kind of same mechanism as I was talking about earlier the conditioning. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same formula. The plant, you know, the plant knows what it's doing. Um, so, so yeah, that, that that that's in that sense it changes expression. So, what we what we have now in that um, in that site of injury, is a, a plant has to now decide what it's going to do with that with that site. So, the first thing is it has to close it up to stop infection, right? So, you got a bunch of genes activated there that weren't activated before in order to to basically heal that wound. Then, what you normally get is is new growth that occurs from there. Or, you know, the kind of classic thing is if you take a a bit of a branch away to make a clone, you'll have two new ones that appear from that. That's an interesting change in expression as well because you've went, you've, you've each, although there's a, like a, what we call the apical meristem, which is like, you know, the tallest part of the plant is, is where the, the, the main suite of uh, stem cells are in the plant. But it's also true that on each branch, you have an apical kind of dominance as you go up and down the, that, that branch itself. So when you take away that apical dominance from even a branch, not even the full plant, just from that branch, what happens is because it re, um, starts back from the, the kind of the stem cell, say the meristem stem cell, the, the, because the plant's symmetrical, you end up with two. So we we know this phenomenon, right? When you take a cut, you often get two that grow back. So that's what's happening there. You're changing 
not actually that's actually less to do with gene expression and actually more to do with how the cells differentiate, you know, because you've set them on a pathway. But it's all triggered by the fact that you've caused this wound. So it's all like a series of of gene expression, protein um, receptors, and you know, it's a big feedback loop which one action results in another action results in another action and often that does result in a series of gene expression changes so very literally that's what that means but then a little bit more kind of holistically it's it's about you know ready in the plant for the different types of things that's to come as well i.e more stress you know and that's how you can m- mitigate the stress response because some things you want a stress response and some things you want you don't want the stress response you want to be able to do things and the plant just keeps growing, doesn't care, right? And that's the whole big battle between pathogen and yield. Pathogen resistance, sorry, and yield. Pathogen resistance is great, but sometimes what happens if the plant doesn't defend itself and it just keeps growing, it ends up decimated at the end, right? Because it's, it's been, been eaten alive by this, this bug or whatever. On the other hand, um, if the plant's susceptible to it, what it does is it shuts down, it doesn't grow. It redirects its energy reserves and tries to fight off the the infection in the best it can, or it shuts down that side of the plant and tries to regrow somewhere else. You know, they can another half of the plant because it it knows that's compromised. And plants are also really good at killing themselves. So, like locally, they'll kill certain cells to stop the the spread of infection, and that can actually be, you know, quite widespread. A plant can actually just program. It's called program cell death, and just like completely destroy itself in order to save itself. Um, you know, and and, and that, again, like, different parts of the planet will do that. You even see it with like it's a, a, a bit of a stretch, but the same thing is is like when they when they wilt leaves. It's a kind of similar thing, right? It's like they're, they're, okay, that's done now. We we'll just cut off the supply of that slowly, pinch it, and then it just it, it's no longer getting any nutrients from the stem, and it withers and dies and drops off. So it's, it's the same kind of thing, you know. It's slightly different, but it's the same kind of thing. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.